this is Jimmy coming to you from Gen Con 2019. Uh, I'm here with Drew. I'm going to hey, let him introduce himself. Hey, everybody. I'm Drew Nolasco. I am the global brand manager in charge of the Transformers trading card game. You just announced Wave 4. That's yep. pretty exciting. Yeah. Coming out. Cybertron Siege uh, 2. Yeah. Is the, the release schedule that you have planned sort of solid going forward every three months or so? Every three months is a really comfortable time period for releasing new booster sets. And then we're gonna, we'll sprinkle in other products in between, right? Like the smaller, smaller products that aren't the size or the commitment of a full booster set. But right now, uh, every three months seems to be pre working pretty well. Um, is the, the plan for like the tournament uh, schedule to always have it in, in the December sort of area? Or is that like the open sort of wrap up? So this year we had our organized play schedule running Origins and Gen Con as open events leading into uh, the Invitational, the Energon Invitational in December at PAX Unplugged. And then we have in-store play qualifiers driving through people to that event as well and that runs up to September 30th. As with everything we do with Transformers, we're going to look and see how that worked. So far so good, um, so we're pretty happy with what's gone on before, but we need to get through the entire season before we can see see sure. did all of these pieces make sense um, so far the the open events like the one we're running here at Gen Con uh, have been working really well and then we're gonna look at the timing of the the in-store play events once we get past September 30th which is a long-winded way of saying like with most things we do with Transformers iterative improvement is the name of the game um, so Trypticon looks pretty awesome yeah. I'm very excited for another Titan type card um, the first new uh, mechanic that sort of got revealed was the revenge. Are there any other sort of new mechanics that you can talk about or reveal at this time, or at least confirm that there are new mechanics besides this? Or there are absolutely new new mechanics and design spaces and play patterns built into Siege Two. Um, revenge happens to be a keyword mechanic that you see there in the Trypticon. Uh, family of cards, but there's a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, a, a while ago, I, you know, I've been saying that Siege 2 represents the desperate end of the days on Cybertron, and that each of the factions would do, would take extreme measures in order to win the war. Trypticon is one of those first measures, right? Like, he's, he's not the world's most stable bot, and the fact that the Decepticons have to go to that extreme length suggests that there's something going on on the Autobot side that is powerful enough that they need a Titan, even one as uncontrollable as Trypticon from the story point of view, um, in order to counter that. So yes, there's other really cool things, and we'll be rolling them out over time. Um, the other thing I'd like to ask specifically about um, Wave 4, is there a new pip no. color? No, no. no new pip there's in... There's no new pip color. So we've deployed the, co the core new uh, pips. Uh, when we're starting a new trading card game, we don't want to put everything out there because information overload is a real issue when you're starting up a new game. Like, too many choices, too many strategies at once is actually detrimental to people onboarding the game. So we rolled them out over the course of successive sets. And once we got to the black pip, like Durant's Pierce in War for Cybertron Siege 1, we established the, the core family of pips. Are we going to do new pips in the future? Yeah, we'll sprinkle them in here and there, but they're, it's not, the pattern isn't every set will have a new pip. And so Siege 2 doesn't have a new pip. All right, so the, so the core family that you had planned at the beginning was the five. That's correct. The five colors. Right, attack, defense, critical hit for extra flips, yep. uh, card fetching in the green pip, and pierce in the black pip are the core five pips. Awesome. Uh, can we move on to some questions yeah, from the course. fans? All right. Hello, everyone. So. <laughs> Thank you for the questions. I love doing this. Please keep the questions coming. Uh, so obviously the big one is Unicron. Do you have plans for Unicron? So it's funny that you bring this up. Um, there are no, there's no product in development right now for Unicron. However, I would love to bring Unicron into the game. I would love to bring Primus. I would love to bring Primus's kids, the 13, into the game. Um, 
And one of the things that we're, we're, we're thinking about is how do we make Unicron feel like Unicron and also fit into the, the trading card game. Like one of the things that we do is we play with the size of our cards, right? And if a Titan card is about this big, how big does Unicron have to be that feels like he's Unicron while not requiring a minivan to move around for, you know? Um, so we're working, we're working on that from sort of the idea space. Um, I wouldn't say it's an inevitability, but it's something we're very desirous of doing. Uh, I, it's not going to be a 2019 thing, might not even be a 2020 thing, um, but particularly with Hasbro's uh, announcement of the 28 inch tall yep. Unicron. It was funny, I was working the booth, the Transformers booth at San Diego Comic Con, so I was standing next to him, uh, and we were wearing these shirts that said, ask me about Unicron. <laughs> so it was just nonstop questions about Unicron, and this, this question's inevitable, right? Like, because we follow the toy line for yep. some of our sets. Um, I guess next question is, are there any plans in the works for a third faction beyond just Autobots and Decepticons? The Quintessens, for example. I mean, there, there, there are other factions in the history, the 35 year history of Transformers, right? And you, you mentioned the Quintessons. And from a very, very technical point of view, there are other forms of transforming life outside. Like the Quintessons really aren't transforming life, right? They are, they convert in, in the fact that their faces move to represent a different emotion. But there are, like, the Junkions um, are one form of converting life inside the Transformers universe. Are we going to bring them in? Yeah, they're on the plate, right? Like, we're going to go that deep at some point. Uh, they're, not, they're not in Siege, for example. I mean, I mean, from a really, like, I've said this before, I love the Titans, right? And I love the concept that the Titans were really Cybertronian colony ships that went out. Like, that version of the Titans really excites me. Because, you know, you get Caminus, and you know all of these other titans and their groups of of, of characters, um, their bots, um, who all like Velocitron, like they all bring something really interesting to the table. And are they tech? They're not technically Autobots or Decepticons, although some of them have been. Like Windblade is not originally from Cybertron, right? Yeah. In some versions of the continuity. <laughs> um. Next question would be, are there any plans for characters like Double Dealer or Punch Counter Punch where they have a split allegiance? Oh. And how might you implement that in gameplay terms? Um, <laughs> it's, it, these are questions are challenging because, <laughs> let me give you the meta answer. And the meta answer is, there's very few things inside of the Generations family of Transformers uh, stories and toys that aren't on the table. But there's extremely few things that we couldn't implement. What is important to us is that we implement them in a way that feels faithful to where they came from and feels um, like it's adding to and, and building up the options for players. So I could easily rattle off some awesome ways that we could do punch counter punch, for example. Like none of these are for sure, but like we could have two character cards that, that are, you know, punch and counter punch that are swapping in and out of play to replace one another. Um, like we could have, you know, interesting fold card, you know, yeah. like there's so that we, we have the tools to do this. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say exactly how, what we think would be the best way to do this, but know that we're building up this suite of physical ways to represent Transformers characters that allow us to do just about everybody. Six changers are tough. Yeah, I was super excited about when the combiners came out. That was a really cool thing. I actually played Menasaur in the tournament yesterday. How'd that go? I got 14th, so okay. I mean, I, the highest I got was 8th, and then I dropped down to 14. I mean, but there, were, there were over 50 people in that. Of, in, that was it the afternoon event or the morning event? Yeah, I did the uh, 4 o'clock event with okay, Menasaur. There were over 50 people in that event, so you not only are in the top half, you're like well into the top thirds. So that's awesome. Yeah, no, it was super fun. Thank you. Uh, me, personally, I like playing um, those types of characters that, I don't know, don't get a lot of uh, play in the sort of meta of the game. And that's so. the strength of the Transformers. TCG is that we can bring in all of the characters in varieties of ways and have characters that have very, very niche abilities from a game point of view that really 
challenge and inspire players to say, how do I use this most effectively? And it's, it's cool that you're, you're, you're that type of player because you represent innovation, right? Like you're like, that's an interesting thing. It's not obvious how I'm going to succeed with that, but like, there's, there's a way, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, for me, I'm going to talk about Menacer now. Um, for me, it was, I had no interest in Menasaur to begin with, but my nephew loved playing with him. He was like all about him when it first came out. Okay. That was the one he wanted. And then we were playing one day and I sort of really started to look at the cards and I was like, wait a minute, I think there's something here. So it's just like, you, they allow you to have these aha moments, which is really great. I think that's 95% of the fun of the Transformers game is finding those things and making the combination. Yep. yep, I agree with you completely. And Menacer is really interesting because he's a Decepticon who's a team who's comprised of cars and trucks, right? So normally you don't get to play the car and truck uh, car, uh, family of cards in a Decepticon deck because there aren't that many car and truck. I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's always going to be some, but that deck says, hey, how do I use those cards that are typically on the Autobot side and, and, and bring them into this deck? Um, the next question from the fans, uh, are there plans for rules for multiplayer matches in the works? Not Because right that's now. a huge thing for, I know, for me. Not right now. Not right now. Um, right now, we're focusing on 1v1 play. Yep. Uh, but one of the potential ways that we could implement someone like Unicron is as a raid and have cooperative multiplayer where mm -hmm. Unicron is facing down four players, say, for, and so there are many ways that we could implement m multiplayer. I'm a huge fan of multiplayer. Like, I play Magic, but Commander is my main yep. expression of Magic. Um, so we're going to focus on, on continuing to build that 1v1, and then once we have you know, the super critical mass of 1v1 enthusiasts and have dem and we see a critical mass of multiplayer enthusiasts who are want that, then we'll talk about that multiplayer. Um, so you just talked about multiplayer and a possible raid. Uh, any other game modes that you're thinking about or toying with at the moment? No. Um, we're really happy where we are. So, you know, we've got constructed play. Uh, Turbo has been fantastic for us. Um, Turbo is uh, really, really a shockingly amazing tool both for us as a brand and for players as a way to have that quick experience. Uh, and it's the best way to open a box of boosters. So we're going to be focusing on, on constructed and then limited in the form of Turbo and sealed. Yep. And then draft will be a a sort of uh, one step removed for the most uh, high level players who really want a very, very deep strategy experience in not just the gameplay, but the method of deck building. Um, so I heard from somebody that Grapple is your favorite Transformer. Yeah, because, because <laughs> Grapple's my favorite Transformers character, not just Cart, but because it was connected with a very important personal life experience like, I learned how to save money so I could get a larger Transformers character as a kid, and Grapple was that character. And I still have my G1 Grapple. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Some, of my G1, some of my G1 toys from when I was a kid. Um, uh, I would say met an untimely end through play, uh, possibly in confrontation with G.I. Joe. And then uh, some of them just were lost to the like, ravages of time and moving. But, but a few of them, I've were so important to me that I've kept and, uh, and, and hands on no matter what, and Grapple's one of them. Uh, did you help make his card? Was that? No, actually I didn't. No. Um, I don't do a ton of game design. Okay. I worked on um, the, the core system design. Uh, there were a lot of people who worked on that. In, in terms of how we organize our team, I, do, I pretty much run things outside of game design. And then there's another leader, uh, Charlie Catino, who uh, uh, runs the game design group for Transformers. I just didn't know if you tried to like insert yourself to favorite character, 
You know, my background is <laughs> my background is in game design, and you know, we all participate in playtests. That's part of the job. Yeah. Uh, but no, core game design responsibilities uh, fall under yeah. a bunch of other talented people. <laughs> um, I guess is there anything else that you want to talk about or promote that we haven't touched on yeah, so far? Think, how do you think the, the the open events gone so far? Um, I mean, you had first-hand experience. From sure. Events, yeah, um, I actually played in Origins as well. Um, didn't do too well there, uh, and my brother actually qualified oh, wow. for the Energon Invitational. Um, Am I going to see you at PAX Tabletop? Probably, yeah. I'm probably going to come with him and try and do a store qualifier so that I can also compete. Yeah, so so maybe one thing that I, I would want to point out to all the fans is every store that, that received a uh, in-store play kit is eligible to run a qualifier. And if your local store isn't and you want more opportunities, ask ask your the stores in your in your area because they are all all of them that receive that kit are eligible to run that that qualifying event. Um, and in some cases. You just have to ask the store owner to like, hey, can you schedule this and people will show up. So this was Jimmy and Drew at Gen Con 2019 and uh, we're signing off.